Hey guys, this is Andrew with High Level Reviews, and today I'd like to take a look at Parasite Eve. The game was developed and published by Square, and came to North America in September of 1998 on the PlayStation. It was advertised by Square as a cinematic RPG experience, and felt very much like a merger of Final Fantasy VII and Resident Evil. It is a sequel to a novel that shares its name, and many parts of the novel are referenced throughout the game. Square wanted to deviate from long and menu-heavy RPG experiences, while incorporating a survival horror shell that tossed aside the clunky controls generally associated with the genre. Though the game is obscenely short, coming in at just over 10 hours, its use of superbly detailed cinematics, the easy to understand but still intricate fighting system, and an intriguing story easily keep the player immersed for the short duration of the game. The game starts with Aya Brea, a New York City police officer, going to the opera with her loquacious and self-absorbed date. The event is unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately if you're Aya, spoiled by an apparent mass spontaneous combustion, with the only survivors being Aya, her now fleeing date, and an actress on stage named Melissa. Melissa informs Aya that her mitochondria needs more time to develop, whatever that means, and eventually runs backstage where she mutates into a beast and calls herself Eve, shortly before disappearing into the sewers. The rest of the game is spent tracking down Eve, either by following the piles of goo or charred corpses, or through long scenes spent reading massive info dumps that, thankfully, don't happen too often. The info dumps often contain many references to cell biology and evolutionary principles. It even references Richard Dawkins' The Selfish Gene. The writers did a good job of not getting too technical or too advanced for the layperson, and stops just short of complicating things beyond reasonable expectations. It keeps the narrative as simple as it can be when one is dealing with self-aware mitochondria with aspirations of world domination. As the story progresses, layers are peeled back on what is a deep story with many unseen connections to prior events referenced through flashbacks or visions. However, what did disappoint me was the dialogue outside of the info dumps. It was often melodramatic or excessively cliché, and the attempts at subplots and emotional pull often felt short with me. Admittedly, the story isn't for everyone, and even fervent fans of the series have a hard time agreeing on how they view the plot and narrative. Personally, while mitochondria might not seem all that interesting initially, the explanations offered and the wild connections made later in the game show that a great deal of thought was put into connecting the game's story to the novels and to telling a cohesive, if not a bit convoluted, tale. The director for this game, Tokashi Tokita, was also also a lead designer on Final Fantasy IV and one of the directors for Chrono Trigger, so one would expect this type of depth and attention to detail. One thing is certain, love it or hate it, it was anything but a predictable story. Despite some uninspired writing that hampered character development and kept me from ever truly feeling connected, the story still kept my interest throughout the game due to its bizarre twist, strong female protagonist, and the truly grotesque cinematics, which earned Square its first mature rating. Fortunately, you don't have to be infatuated with the story to love this game. Parasite Eve is an action role-playing game that lets you move freely through environments. Movement is fluid and unencumbered by clunky controls like most survivor horror games of that era. Outside of some frustratingly touchy interactions, such as needing to slam the X button over and over on an object that I couldn't possibly get any closer to, I rarely had any major issues with character movement and interactions. You get into combat by passing over hotspots and areas. The more you enter a fight on a particular hotspot, the less likely future fights will occur on that spot. I enjoyed this system immensely, and it allows the player to control, kind of, encounters and helps to mitigate unnecessary or poorly timed fights. Traditional random encounter systems often felt unnecessarily punishing to newcomers, this is a bit more forgiving. Upon entering a fight, the player is boxed into a small area of the field and must avoid getting hit by recognizing patterns or simply running, which can get frustrating because Aya runs like she has no knees. The game uses a possible real-time combat system and an active time bar that determines when you can take an action, which includes item usage, changing weapons, attacking, or using parasite energy which includes heals, buffs, and offensive spells. If you elect to attack, a large dome appears and represents your attack range. You can still attack outside of that range, but you'll rarely hit, and even if you do, the damage is often negligible. Each use of Parasite Energy makes the PE bar recharge slower, to the point that it nearly won't recharge unless you change armor, which isn't really advertised anywhere in the game. The customization options for Aya's weapons and armor really won me over. A lot of weapons and armors have attributes and effects, 
such as adding shots to your weapons or an auto cure effect on a piece of armor. Since a lot of weapons have clearly defined strengths and weaknesses, it's a real challenge to try and tinker around with tools and super tools, which are items that allow the player to move the attributes from one weapon to another to concoct the strongest possible weapon. Handguns had the clear edge most of the game, as the time from input to actually firing the gun was the shortest, but as the game progresses, some very large and powerful options start to present themselves. As you level up, you also gain bonus points, or BP for short, and these can be allocated in several different ways. You can either enhance weapons and armor, or increase inventory slots and even decrease the time between turns. I particularly liked the BP system because it allowed the player some freedom. You want more item slots? Great! You want a particular gun to be a bit more powerful or have a bit more ammo per round? That's fine too. This feature provides plenty of options and versatility without creating too many balance issues. While a possible fighting system with many RPG elements might negate some of the tension felt when compared to classic survival horror titles, the creatures in this game are genuinely terrifying and the environments and music often augment that sense of dread. The combat is addictive and rarely feels cheap outside of a few monsters that have deceptive attack ranges. My one minor complaint would be inventory management. While you do eventually gain enough slots to not have to worry about it, it is a real pain early in the game and can create some frustrating backtracking to storage spots. It's not a major issue, but it can certainly be a nuisance. Graphically, Parasite Eve contains some impressively unnerving cinematics. While it is certainly a game of its time and suffers in all of the predictable areas that PS1 games do, I was truly appalled by some of the transformation shown and the charred humans and awful melting people during the Central Park segment. The timing of these scenes was also perfect, never lasting too long but usually adding the perfect precursor or finale to a scene. The quality of the still 3D rendered images is impressive as well, especially at recreating New York locales with a gruesome twist. Despite being close to 20 years old, which is ancient in the video game world, the game is typically a pleasure to look at. The music was done by Yoko Shimamura, who is mostly known for the Kingdom Hearts series, and while the meshup of opera and electronica might seem odd and ill-fitted for the game initially, it works in most cases. It just didn't feel as memorable as her other titles, and there were scenes that were strangely devoid of any music. It was a bit jarring and a rough oversight to make for a title that was otherwise pretty polished. While it might be easy to initially notice Parasite Eve's flaws, a tiny inventory, the duration of the game, a fairly hokey and tangled plot, the wonderfully implemented and designed combat system by itself should attract any RPG enthusiast. Couple that with a beautiful background, terrifying cinematics, and a new game plus that includes a new location with the best weapons and items in the game, and you'll surely enjoy your time with this excellent title. If you enjoyed the review, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. This has been Andrew with High Level Reviews, and I appreciate you guys stopping by.